I recently built an 8 wheel snake bike, and that was based on a smaller version that I built some time ago. Before that I built a worm robot which moves by expanding and contracting. This is known as a system of peristalsis, which from Wikipedia is defined as a radically symmetrical contraction and relaxation of muscles that propagates in a wave down a tube. While I was researching these projects I came across another experimental robot which uses a wave motion, with the wave running down its body to propel it forwards. This is a bit like how snakes actually move. Well, at least the ones without wheels, or legs of course. My original plan for this project was to make a surfboard you can ride on the land, but using a mechanical wave like this to propel me along, and use a large set of mountain board wheels for steering. However, I thought that I'd try to make a smaller version for this mechanism first to see what the potential problems could be. It looks a bit like the mechanical wave is formed by a thing that looks a bit like a giant corkscrew, which simply rotates inside a flexible track. So I 3D printed a former which I used to try to bend some wire around. I wanted this to be quite stiff because in my version it has to support the whole weight of the machine, so I used 4mm diameter stainless steel rod. This was pretty hard to bend into shape by hand though, and my resulting screw shape doesn't quite match the former or the original CAD design, but we'll see what the problems that causes later. I then 3D printed lots of parts to make the flexible linkages and the other parts of the machine. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So we've got lots of parts to make the linkages for all of the track pieces, so we've got shorter ones and longer ones, so those can go together, and then it can be articulated. Quite a few of those go together to make a nice bendy track, and that has a cavity down the middle that we can put our screw piece in. So that's nice and flexible, all of the linkages are just M4 bolts screwed into the plastic. So now we can insert our giant corkscrew and rotate it and see if that looks like it's doing anything that it should be. So with a bit of help it looks like it runs in there quite freely, without too many problems at least. And that's looking like we've got that sort of wave motion, so I'm pretty happy of how that's gone so far. The rest of the chassis for this was too big for the print bed, so it's made in two pieces with a bridge section screwed on to hold the two together. Those screws need to run on something, so I've got this special pulley, which has got some 8mm skate bearings in the middle. And that's got a groove in that allows that piece of steel to rest in there and it can be zip tied or glued in, so hopefully that can be rotated by the motor and idle at the other end. Each of those fits onto some M8 studding glued into some end sections, so with that all together we've got quite a satisfying screw motion. So at this point we've got a screw drive that seems to work pretty well, and of course you can see the motion moving from one end to the other as I turn it, so we could actually just drive it on this. And you may remember that Colin Furs did build a screw tank and it had two giant screws that drive it along due to this motion. The only downside of that is that we do have some sideways friction with those screws turning which would rub on the ground. Doing it this way with this bendy track over it means we can manage the friction within the track using bearings or sliders or something like that and then we only get the motion pushing front and back as the track wiggles. So now I've fitted the track onto the corkscrew and you can see we almost get that wave motion but it's a bit sticky and it gets stuck in certain places which means it's not going to rotate very easily with a motor. So it appears that putting the corkscrew on centre has caused some issues with the tolerance of the screw itself. So I've printed some slightly different tops and bottoms for the track segment so there's slightly more space for that screw to rotate. And now it seems to move much more freely and we get that nice wave motion that you can see there. So we can see that we've got that wave going backwards and forwards as the corkscrew turns and moves the flexible linkages. So hopefully that should be sufficient to drive the whole thing along. I want to try and make a tank out of this, so I've made two of those assemblies and I've also printed a top plate that holds the two parallel with each other. So now hopefully we can drive backwards and forwards by attaching motors to it and using differential drive. So I've put pulleys on my motors as well, and with those fitted and some electronics fitted we should be able to drive the whole thing along. I've got an Arduino Mega in there with two motor drivers that should be more than sufficient and an NRF 24L01 radio chip so I can use the OpenDog 3 remote to remote control it. So it looks like the waves move backwards and forwards so we can drive them in either direction as you'd expect for a differential tank drive so they can move in the same direction and also in opposite directions so hopefully we can turn on the spot.
but it looks like we might have a couple of issues. As well as not having much grip on the surface, it's also rotating and going sideways when it shouldn't be, so we need to investigate why that is. Yep, that really isn't very good at all, so I think some of the problem is that those motors are massively heavy and that's probably causing quite a lot of issues pushing down the mechanism and flexing that wire that I have in there. So we can see that the pulleys are actually running on the ground at the bottom which is causing it to rotate sideways. I think those motors are probably overkill so I've got some much smaller lighter ones here and I've used these in quite a few projects before. These are 12 volt motors and they've also got a gear head on them and an off centre shaft which is quite useful because we can rotate them into different positions to get the belts tight. With the new motors fitted we can power that up and see how it performs and initially it seems much better. Those tracks are moving much more freely, I'm actually rotating deliberately here and that seems to be working not too badly. There's not much grip with the surface though, so I've got lots of little rubber feet and I'm sticking those to the tracks all the way along. Hopefully that will help with ground clearance as well as traction with the ground. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just click on instant quote and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. If you want the board assembled then you can add a BOM and CPL file. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB is a one stop shop with a team of trained engineers to manufacture and assemble your board under one roof. And with the new JLC PCB parts manager you can check available stocks, order parts or even request specific parts for your project. JLC PCB ships worldwide and they have fast build times so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. JLC PCB also provide 3D printing services from as little as 7 cents per gram, so you can get enclosures and other parts manufactured in a variety of materials. 3D printing processes include SLA, MJF, SLM, FDM and SLS in both plastics and metals. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. So we still have that wave motion and it looks like those rubber feet are pushing in one direction or the other, so hopefully that should help it locomote along. So this is deliberate rotation which seems to be working much better than it was before, it seems to have much better traction with the surface. And driving seems to work quite well too. And we can see now we've got much better ground clearance, that pulley's well off the ground, so that's not dragging it sideways when it shouldn't be. So it seems to drive okay, although it looks like there's more friction on one track than the other because one of the tracks is running much slower. So here you can see the inside track sometimes gets stuck and it kind of pauses, whereas the outside track that's going much faster is running much freer and that's running constantly. So it's time to have a look and see what's going on there. This track is running fine and this one is not though, so it looks like something's getting stuck or there's too much friction. So if we run it we can see that sometimes that pulley pops off so it looks like there's some extra forces in the tension of that screw and it's not quite the right shape. So the more I kept testing it and I tried running it slower as well so there's less power on the motor but then it completely jammed so I think that that shape isn't quite right. I spent around an hour trying to reshape that screw by hand to try and get it to run freely so this is about the best I can do, so it seems to run okay if I run the motor slower so there's not as much power. It runs in both direction, both my pulleys and idlers stay on, and it doesn't jam. It runs much better now, although one track still does have more friction because it still turns slightly in one direction, but I have differential drive so I can alter the motor speeds manually and steer it back again. So it's not perfect and it's definitely very critical how those screws are shaped so there's not too much friction on one side. So I'm pretty happy of how that drives along though, I think it probably goes at about the same velocity it would if it were a traditional screw tank like the one Colin built, but the added bonus is that those screws don't have any friction when they rotate sideways onto surfaces like the carpet for instance. So hopefully managing that friction with the metal running on smooth plastic makes it more efficient than it would be if it just ran on the driving surface. And I really like the way it looks when it drives, it looks pretty peculiar, so I think there's quite a lot of potential here for using this mechanism in some other projects, whether we're driving a vehicle or whether we're driving a surface with this mechanism upside down. 
But the question you really want answering is, can it drive over obstacles? So here are my pieces of test wood that I use in lots of other robots, and you can check out some of the other weird wheels and things in my channel. And yeah, it's not too bad. I'm having to steer a bit here, so only one track was running for a bit, but that was intentional to try and steer into the wood. But yeah, it will climb over stuff and doesn't do too much of a bad job of it. We don't have too much ground clearance due to those pulleys and those idlers at each end of the screw. But on the whole, it does climb over things and I'm not too unhappy with the way it works. I'm not too unhappy with that. There are several improvements we can make. One would be to have shorter links on these flexible tracks and that would make the track more flexible so it would fit around the screw better. Um, I think that's probably something we need to do for a track this short. In the original one it looked like it was much more flexible and those links are much shorter. The other thing would be to form the screw better of course, which was quite a challenge and probably the reason this didn't work as well as it should. A better approach might be just to form the wire around something round, the way springs are made, and then stretch it out so it looks like a giant compression spring. Getting the diameter right would be quite hard of course because it would get smaller the more you stretched it out, but that might be a better approach, although it would be quite hard to get it to run on centre perfectly, which is probably where most of the problem is. I still like to make one that I can ride on using these mountain board trucks. In that case, most of my mass and the motor driving it will be supported by the wheels, so it wouldn't be quite the same as this. But then we'd still need quite a strong screw in case I leant back onto it, so you probably need something bent out of tube. Now, I have bought a pipe bender recently, but it's going to be quite critical still how that um, spiral is formed. It's quite, going to be quite hard to form it out of tube, so it might be something for a specialist company. In any case, I am going to try and make one I can ride on, like an artificial wave with a surfboard on it, because I think that would be quite fun to see how it propels me along. So I'm going to publish a Canon code for this if you want to have a go at building one or have a look at any of my differential drive code or any of that stuff, that's on GitHub. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up, so you can be part of that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.